Basically what the hinge theorem says is that if we have two sides in one triangle that are congruent to two sides in another triangle, but the angle, okay, that's in between those two congruent sides is different, okay, you can see here this is 30, here this is 40, what we can do is we can look across, okay, diagonally across from that angle. The one that's across from the larger angle is going to be the longer side, and that's why they call it the hinge theorem, because you can see like this hand, my right hand and my left hand, if I open up that angle to a larger extent, right, the side across from that angle is gonna be longer. So it's pretty obvious, but just, you know, we wanna go over this nonetheless. So with the converse of the hinge theorem, what we're talking about here is they're actually giving us three side lengths. Notice that these two side lengths are congruent to these two side lengths, but what's different between these two triangles is that see how this side is eight, this side is 12. Which angle do you think is larger, angle A or angle B? Well, if you said angle B, you're absolutely right, so that's greater. And the reason is, is because to accommodate that side 12, we have to open up this hinge wider, right? So this angle B is gonna be larger than angle A. Now, what happens if these were exactly the same? You know, let's say they were both eight or both 12. Then the two angles would be congruent, and you probably remember this from when you learned about congruent triangles. That would be the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem, meaning that if three sides are congruent to three sides, everything in those triangles is gonna be exactly the same. It's gonna be an exact match. So let's jump into some examples, see if you can do these, and we'll go over them. So this first one, example one, look at what we've got. We've got a six, eight, and five, six, eight, and four, and we're trying to figure out is angle A larger or angle F larger? We're comparing those two. Well, again, notice we have six and eight, six and eight. Okay, so those two sides that are making up the angle, right? Those two sides are making up that angle. What we have to do is we have to look across, okay, from that angle. And what do you notice here? You've got five versus four. Five is greater than four. That means that angle A must be opening up wider, right, than angle F. So here we have angle A is greater than angle F. Okay, let's go to example number two. Now here, this is a little bit different uh, setup. You can see these two triangles are right next to one another. They're sharing this side right here. Okay, DB, so DB is congruent to itself by reflexive. And we can see that uh, DC is congruent to DA, so we have two sides, okay, that are congruent to two sides in this triangle, but what's different is the angle that's in between those two sides. Here, 30 degrees is gonna be opening wider than 25 degrees, so you can see that BC is going to be greater than AB. Okay, example three, you can see that we've got two triangles, okay, and you can see that they're sharing this side right here, this side AT, it's 10 units long. But notice that you've got 10 and six, and you've got 10 and six, but what's different is that the side across from this angle here, okay, is shorter than the side that's across from this angle over here. So we're trying to compare angle SAT, SAT, that's this angle, versus ATC, that's this angle, but again, notice you have those two sides, they're congruent, but what's different is the angle in between. Here what we're doing is we're looking across from the angle, and you can see that eight is longer than seven, which means that this angle has to be opening wider, right? So this is the converse of the hinge theorem, and uh, you can see that this is gonna be ATC is gonna be greater than angle SAT. 